Students often have difficulty classifying quantitative research designs. In quantitative research, designs can be classified into one of three categories. Descriptive non-experimental, quasi-experimental, or experimental. To identify which of these designs your study is using, follow the steps in this video. First, ask yourself if the researchers did anything to the participants. More specifically, was there an intervention? Interventions include things like support groups, educational sessions, treatments for a condition, or some other variable that is being tested. If people would not normally have something without being in the study, but the researcher gives it to them to see what it will do, then that is an intervention. You may also see research texts call this a manipulation. Essentially, the researcher did something to people to provoke some kind of measurable result. If the answer is yes, there was an intervention, then the study is either quasi-experimental or experimental. I will tell you how to decide in a moment. If the answer is no, the study is descriptive non-experimental. Sure, you could be more specific in the description of the design, but for the purposes of grouping your research in a literature review, this label is often sufficient at an undergraduate level. Descriptive non-experimental studies may also be called observational. Some examples of more specific labels include case control, cohort, and correlational studies. For more information about these non-experimental designs, please visit the research playlist below this video and watch the video about research paradigms and methodology. To find out if the design is experimental, ask yourself if it is a randomized controlled trial. Randomized controlled trials are considered the gold standard or best possible design in quantitative research. You may also hear randomized controlled trials referred to as true experiments. However, in the real world it is difficult to conduct a true randomized controlled trial in many situations, which means that a lot of studies are done that are not classified as randomized controlled trials. Randomized controlled trials have three key components, a random sample, a control group, and an intervention. If your study is truly a randomized controlled trial, it should say in the abstract and or the methods section of the article. If it doesn't say, then it is likely that the study is either descriptive non-experimental or quasi-experimental. You can tell the difference by looking into the methods section further. Recall that if the intervention is missing, the study is not an experiment. As we just discussed, this type of research is observational in nature and therefore is classified as a descriptive non-experimental study. If there is no control group, then the study is quasi-experimental. A control group is a group of people that enter the study but do not receive the same intervention under study. Instead, they are used for the purpose of comparison. If the sample was not randomized properly or adequately or even at all, then the study is also quasi-experimental. You may also see this type of study being called a non-randomized trial. Many randomized strategies exist, but basically, if a study is randomized, it means that everyone who entered the study had an equal chance of receiving the intervention under study. You may see some studies indicate that they were partially randomized. These studies still do not count as true experiments. If your study has a random sample, control group, and intervention, then it is a randomized controlled trial. Sometimes, I see students that are confused about the study design because of the terms that relate to the length of time the study was conducted or the sampling process. While you are right that these terms relate to the study designs, they are not broad enough to represent the methodology of the study and therefore do not give enough information to the reader about the study design. Terms like cross-sectional and longitudinal tell you how much time the study was conducted over. Cross-sectional means that data were collected at one point in time. Longitudinal means that data were collected over a long period of time. These terms alone will not tell you if the study is descriptive, non-experimental, quasi-experimental, or experimental. If you use these words to describe your study design, 
in the absence of one of the labels we discussed in this video, you will not have given your teacher enough information about the study design to properly classify it. Other confusing terms often relate to the way samples were collected, like convenience sampling. Convenience sampling means that the sample was readily available or accessible to the researchers. This term will give you a hint that the study does not have a random sample and therefore is not a randomized controlled trial, but you still need to classify it further as descriptive non-experimental or quasi-experimental. To decide how to classify the design of a study you are looking at, follow the steps outlined in this video. Ask yourself the following three questions. Was there an intervention? Is there a control group? Was the sample random? The answer to these questions will tell you how to classify the design of any quantitative study into one of these three categories, descriptive non-experimental, quasi-experimental, or experimental. Check with your teacher to see what other labels they may be expecting in the description of your research design, just in case they want a little more detail. If you are looking for more detailed information, you are welcome to check out my ebook or related videos. The ebook is best in PDF format, but is also available in other formats at the links below this video. If there is anything else you need, please comment to let me know and subscribe so you can keep up to date with the videos as they are released. Thank you.